things people requested. So I'm recording now, I think. Um, yeah. Do a message saying you didn't record it. Yeah. Awesome. So uh, but we're being recorded um, right now. So uh, I'm on the screen as well as our PowerPoint, but we'll be posting this and sending out people who couldn't attend in person or be part of it. But I will tell you that this, this trade is to be pretty interactive. So um, just know that uh, thank you for coming in person. I hope it'll be helpful that you were here in person and experienced it this way rather than uh, any other way. And for those of you who attended on Zoom, hopefully it's just as good for you guys as well. But um, I, I know uh, we'll fluid your questions and have a great dialogue. So um, with that, um, I'm going to start our introductions of some of our uh, people. And then also after we do our introductions, we're, we're going to uh, talk a little bit about the document that uh, you have in front of you, which is the membership playbook. I'm going to explain that. Um, like I said, we're going to email it out to everyone online. But uh, first things first, I'm going to click over to the next slide and we're going to talk about your membership team. And luckily, uh, Ken is super duper busy, just walked in the room. I don't know, Ken, Ken would you be willing to walk up front here? If people can see on camera, I, I know he literally part of the spot. But, um, and though, for those of you that are on the membership team that are in the room too, if you guys can come up too, so you stand in front of the camera and introduce yourself. I know I didn't see um, I didn't see Mike online yet, but he might be. If Mike, if you're on, we'll have you introduce yourself last. So just kind of stand right in there again and tell people about yourself. Hello, my name is Ken Heitz. I'm the VP for membership for Second County Council, also uh, an Eagle Scout, son's an Eagle Scout, my brother's an Eagle Scout. Uh, I'm associated with True Bay 43 out of uh, Polaris District, and uh, really excited because we've got some, some good momentum this year, and, and thank you all for being part of, of this and uh, continuing to build on the momentum that we have and, and growing in the future. Thank you. Oh, we want to go in order. Barbara can go next. <laughs> I, I'm Barbara Lossmore from the Frontier District. When did you decide how many miles per week? Neil Harris, you, did you have that figured out? We go from Jeffersonville to Flatwoods, Kentucky. So we have lots and lots of areas that we cover. Um, I work with a pack, a troop, a crew, a girls troop. So uh, I know a little bit about all of those specific areas. That's a long walk, honey. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm Joanna Johnson. A lot of people call me JoJo. Um, I've been working or volunteering with um, Gallus since 2012. Um, I'm associated with Act 332, Act 332, Troop 7332, and also working with our tour organization, the St. Anthony Christian Church in the Gateway District. So nice to be here. Well, thank you. Hi, <laughs> friends. I'm Elizabeth Firth, and I'm with the Polaris District, and I have uh, a, I work with a Cub Scout Pack at 560 and a Troop 85. I'm very excited to be a part of getting kids and excited about scouting and especially parents um, excited about scouting and developing community. Is Mike on? By chance? Mike Jennings, are you online by chance? Don't worry. All right. Well, I'm, first off, I want to give everyone a round of applause who's there. Uh, we have about, I want to say, over 600 schools that we, if you just count elementary schools and intermediate schools that we cover for our, our upscale recruitment, it's a big, big chunk of people to try to manage who's kind of going where, what's happening. Um, uh, there are there are some things that I'll, I'll bounce back to Ken when we, we go to a slide that he's working on um, that I want to talk about as far as things that are successful so far this year with membership. But uh, the, the the key kind of to our success executing um, last year we had about a three percent increase in Cub Scout membership. Um, one of our districts, Barb's district, the Frontier District, experienced 
uh, actual overall growth, not just Cub Scout growth, but our council had 3% growth in Cub Scouts that overall, which is really, really a, a big step in the right direction. And it's largely due to the fact that we had um, a little bit better execution prior to the pandemic or post pandemic with our membership plan. So for those of you that aren't in the room, um, we handed out tonight, and like I said, I'll be emailing to you uh, what we call our membership playbook. Um, in that playbook, it's a step-by-step -step guide on how to execute a membership plan, which we're going to walk through as part of our presentation. Um, but what I'd encourage you to do is, when we're going through the presentation, uh, be an active participant with the playbook. We're going to, at the end, if, you, if you're um, with a troop and you want to focus on troop things, and if you're not, it's okay, but um, we're going to do kind of a breakout where you can talk about Weebo's transition, but if you're only here with the pack, we're going to, then we're going to go and walk through the, what the experience of running a uh, uh, sign up night um, and what that simulating uh, what what it kind of what it takes to do that um, and a lot of that information is all in your playbook you have that playbook that you have um, it's not a huge document but it has some really good information that if you follow it uh, I can't guarantee you'll be successful but it, every year of my uh, time working with the Boy Scouts of America and in two years working as a cub master for my son's pack um, every year that I've done that, that uh, the things inside that playbook, I've had success. Um, every time I've kind of either had a shortcut or found it, maybe try to find a different way to do it that I thought maybe be innovative. Sometimes it's been successful and other times it was uh, not so successful and I kind of bombed and I had to go back to the, the, the way I've been doing it. So um, what we want to do is we want to blend uh, what we do, we do consistently with, with our uh, plan, with innovation and things that work in the community you serve or the schools you're recruiting from. So uh, our next thing I'll talk about really quick is uh, just the recruitment for fall 2023. That's kind of what we're kicking off right now. You may say, well, hey, it's summer technically hasn't even started yet. Why are we talking about fall recruitment? Uh, the number one reason why is because in order for us to adequately prepare and make sure that every pack is successful recruitment that you have all the tools you need in order to be successful and have, have a, a wonderful sign up night and have a lot of new families and hopefully new leaders come into your pack um, or true. Um, we need to prepare for that and have communication, um, planning, and uh, just, just make sure we're, we're all on the same page and we're able to support you as a council as well. So we're going to talk about things like uh, what our goal, our main goal, which is making sure every single scout, every single scout, every single youth in the entire South Virginia Council has the opportunity for the scouts. That's our number one priority. It's a, it's, it's a lofty goal to say that every person, every eligible kid it has an opportunity to do scouting. But that, that truly is our mission. We don't want to have any youth go through life and say, they never asked me to be part of their program. They never gave me the opportunity to do it. And whether that's because of financial reasons or whether it's because of just bad communication, we don't want either of those to be the reason why. That they can't participate. Um, I I personally never participated in scouting as a youth, and I found out afterwards my when I brought my flyer home and said that my friend had given me a flyer to join his Cub Scout pack, but my dad told me no, we were too busy. He thought it was going to be too expensive. That was that was what he told me later on when I first time I said I was going for the Boy Scouts. He's like, oh yeah, we we thought it'd be too expensive to do it because we saw the uniform, we saw the kind of things they did, and like we can't do that. So um, it's a real thing. Families uh, every. Family and whatever neighborhood you're from, it doesn't matter what part of Columbus metro area you're from, what part of Ohio or Kentucky you're from, there are families that would love being part of scouting, but we just need to give them the opportunity to do it. And that's what you're all doing here tonight, which is uh, pretty awesome. So we'd ask you to just try to follow the best practices, learn our plan, um, get the word out about what we're doing so that every kid has an opportunity and every family has an opportunity to participate and grow your unit and have more fun by having a larger pack or troop or career post. Um, I can tell you that as well. My experience as a Cub Scout leader went from having 10 kids in the, in the pack. By the time I left Illinois and moved here, um, my, my son's pack had gone to grown to about 50. And it was a lot more fun. And when I left, I could hand off stuff to a bunch of people and said, I can't be here anymore. But I know that you guys are going to do better at this thing than I was doing. And, I would have, and my son was having more fun in scouting. Um, than he did when we first started, for sure, by, by having more friends in the pack and having more, more fun experiences and a little bit better atmosphere. So um, so the next thing we're going to talk about is we had a really cool thing happen, which is our marketing committee for our council did a, a study with OSU, and I'm going to have Ken come up to be part of the, part of the study. Um, 
trajectory. We're, we're moving forward. We're going up. So let's continue with the momentum. And we're on the path that we had identified in this membership growth plan. So it's not like, oh, a big battle in front of me. Yes, we have a, a, a long road to go, but, but um, we're already making progress. And, and I'll, I'll summarize this in just a few seconds. What we're saying is it's important the focus, we have a funnel here, okay? And the top of the funnel are the lions and the tigers and bears and lions. And, and we're working our way, you know, they, they work their way through the funnel down to the bottom, right? Come out as, as Eagle Scouts. So we work on getting the top of the funnel filled. Because we do get some youth that come in at different levels. And I know a lot of you that came in just to scout me to say they didn't go to Cub Scouts. But for the most part, we start out with Cub Scouts. And we have to show them a great recruitment and a great act, uh, level of programming and activity and actions and the thing with the programs. And it's a lot easier to retain the scouts than to go out and recruit a new one. We all know that. There's nothing new there. So that's what this is all about is, is starting at the top of the funnel and working your and working the way down the funnel. Um, so the I went to a session at OSU, and there were seven groups of about seven people in each of students that are seniors in front of their senior project, and, and they each did a, a project on what can scouting in Central Ohio do better to to improve its, its uh, membership. And this is the summation of that. So it's pretty hefty set of work um, and, and a lot of what they talked about was um, ensuring that people knew that we would exist. They, a lot of them got up and said, didn't know scouting as a kid. And they interviewed each of the groups interviewed between 150 and 250 people. And some of them said, don't know anything about scouting. How can that be? How can that be in today's world that they don't know anything about scouting? But they don't, you know, and, and some people had, um, some people did know something about scouting. There were a few people that were, um, that they interviewed that were in scouting. Only one student out of the 50 had actually been in the program. Only one. It's amazing. About 2%, right? So part of it is getting the word out there. Getting the word out, letting people know that we are around and we're the premier youth 
leadership program in the country, right? And we do the same thing for adults. Okay. We teach adults a lot about leadership. So what their recommendations were, and we're going to delve into it a little bit more and, and over the next few months and, and come up with some hardcore ideas to build into the strategic plan for next year. But, but part of it was really focusing on top of the funnel, that those lions, the tigers, and really getting them in and hosting uh, fun events, fun activities, because we all know the youth, especially at that age, have the, uh, the, the, the uh, attention span of a flea, right? No offense to them, but that's what's, and we're not as animated, perhaps, as, as a video game or something. So we've got to have fun events, and we'll talk about some things we're going to do. We need to prioritize the fun and the adventure um, and, and hold the fun events, whether it's an ice cream social, whether it's just a glider event, or whatever. It's getting harder and harder to get into the schools. So what else can we do in the community? Because we're not just community-based. I mean, we're not just school-based, we're community-based. So can we get into place of worship? Can we get into a rec center? Something of that nature. So there are a lot of opportunities. That's what we're going to talk about tonight. And, and so what, you know, what they came away with at the end of this is make yourself more well-known. Um, and and uh, they talked a lot about our uniforms and whether or not our uniforms were right, but we can't really control that. Uh, but what we can control is how do we attract the youth of today to be in the program tomorrow. So any questions? I'll be around later to get a question. Stop there in the middle. Yes. Do you know, um, would it be national or would it be council level, level um, marketing on TV again? And, and is it all just a money at the moment? So, so great question. Thank you. Because I have, I have seen some other organizations that's had a lot of really cute. So, Chanel. so could you repeat the question? Sure, I'll repeat the question. Speak a little louder. There, have trouble hearing on that. Okay, I'll go louder. Just to. Uh, Oh, that nothing usually happens. People don't use the same go louder. I mean, it's probably the mic right there. Okay. So the question, if I got it right, please correct me if I'm wrong, is are we going to go back on TV and do the advertising because uh, you've seen some other organizations on TV? So one of the things that they did actually in uh, in, the, in the, the students, so two of the courses, two of the groups, actually pulled together ads that were pretty good. And uh, they changed the music up and they got a lot of uh, uh, video off YouTube. Uh, so the goal is to try to do something, get for the money, that was, a, that was a money thing. But also, um, can we do some stuff on YouTube and have people say, just say, you know, go to this YouTube channel and watch this video, right? Because they're on YouTube more than I am. They, they know how to get to it, probably part of their favorites or whatever. Uh, and any other types of social media, um, I mean, they were, they were talking about TikTok, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Not my personal use, but, but, but it is a real thing. People use it a lot, right? So just because I'm a, an old dude doesn't necessarily mean that I'm speaking to all the youth that are five, six, seven, eight. And they're going to listen to me, but they might listen to it in this one on TikTok. I don't know. So that's what we're going through. So the answer, the short answer is yes. Um, but it may not just be TV. It may be other social media platforms. Or even billboards. Or, yeah. Right. Whatever we can do that, that we can find that, that makes sense. I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that later on. Great, great question. Hopefully, I was loud enough for you guys on the, on the online. Any other questions? Thanks again. I appreciate the information. I'm, I think it's pretty cool we did this study. Um, I know a, a section that I was kind of walking away from the the chat. So I'm gonna I am gonna try to see if I can really quickly um, see if my microphone is turned down, and it does not appear it is. I'm not sure why my 
it's not kind of a mystery if you're allowed or not, but um, I have my apologies. You are not hearing us very well. I'll, I'll try to speak up. So um, to not blow you guys away on the sound or anything. Like that. So, um, all right, so some planning and preparation we're gonna ask everyone to do leading into the fall for our sign of nights. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about marketing and we go on, we'll answer some more questions about that. But for now, we're gonna just talk about th things we need you to all think about going into the fall recruitment campaign. Um, first, find someone from your unit to be the fall membership recruitment coordinator and a committee of people to do that. Don't have it be, if you're, the, if you're here as a cup master, don't have don't have you be a, a committee of one. If you're the only person working on recruitment to like, and you're also in charge of all the programs that are going to take place for all the youth that you're recruiting, the, the likelihood is you can't give 100% to it. It's very difficult to when you're working full time and you have your own family with your own Cub Scouts um, to be able to also be in charge of all your recruitment activities and be in charge of all your meetings or anything else. Committees of one are very, not very successful. So find some people to help you. Um, another thing, everything we have, every bit of marketing materials we have includes beascout.org as the, the go-to place to, where we refer people, whether it's our flyers, whether it's our, our signs, um, if we have billboards, if we have any sort of PSAs, they're all gonna say beascout.org on them, every single one of them. So if you're not updating your pin where it talks about who's your leaders, um, who, where do you meet, um, uh, what time do you meet, uh, what day of the week, uh, all those things can be found on your pin when you go to bscout.org when someone says, I live in Westerville, and it'll pop up a map, and I'll say, here's all the packs and troops in Westerville, or I live in Jackson. And they'll show all the units in Jackson and whatever mile radius they're willing to go. Um, so having that piece of pin prepared and updated is extremely important. I'm not going to go through step by step on how to do that. Um, if you just simply type in, uh, if you go to bscout.org and you say I'm with the unit, they have instructions right on there with screenshots, step by step on how to do it. If you do not do it, so um, we'll, um, we'll we'll do that inside your uh, playbook. And like I said, I'm going to be emailing this out to people who are online. Um, there's a spot to set a goal. Um, there's a, a, I forget which page it is, but in the playbook, the, the, the kind of um, a page document, um, there's a spot where you can say, this is how many scouts we have in this den, and this is how many scouts we have in this den. Um, and you can set goals based on how you want to see your dens get filled out. I know that was one of the hard things for my son when we joined Cub Scouts. Uh, he joined as a lion, and he was one of two lions. And one of our lions quit, so he was one lion. And we mm -hmm. met with, as a lion, and, and I was the cub master. My wife was this den leader, and we she met with the tigers because there was no lion. Now he met some good friends in the tigers group, but the, he didn't have any friends in the program with him. Um, that's the goal you can set. You could say, I want to have five youth in each of my dens. I want to make sure that every den is full. I want to make sure every youth has a great experience when they're participating in scouting. Or I want I want to see us grow larger than we were last year, or, hey, wouldn't it be great if we got back to the size of pack we were prior to the pandemic? Like, that's those are some goals you can set. And one of the keys to setting goal is having everyone in your pack committee or whoever's working on membership be part of setting that goal. Um, it's really important that you don't just walk in and say, here's my goal, I'm the club master, and here's the goal we're going to set. Have, having ownership and whatever you're trying to do is really a big deal. So please uh, set that goal. You might even want to consider talking to some of the scouts. Say, hey, how many, how many kids do you think should be in our Cub Scout pack? Maybe they can be part of that goal and be part of reaching a goal. That, uh, that's a big part of scouting. Is how many of you can recruit a friend to come? And if everyone in our pack recruits a friend, do a double our size. Would that be a lot of fun to be able to go to summer camp or day camp with your friend or have meetings with them? I know we're friends with everybody here. Wouldn't that be really neat if everybody recruited a friend? One of our meetings are really fun. Um, so, Attend back to school nights. I stress it, put in uh, parentheses there. This is not your sign up night. I want to stress that. I don't want to be kind of mean about it, but I want to stress that the back to school night, your backpack night, where you go and put all your supplies, and get, like, at least my school district, I got a whole backpack full of stuff that I got to buy for my kid's school. Um, and every other kid brings in there. I just got like a lifetime supply of tissues that, that we bring in, but it, it's every school has one of those. 
And what I'll tell you is if you're making a flyer for kids to join their, at their back to school night and you're expecting families to join your pack only at your back to school night, you're not going to be very successful. And it's not because it's not a great thing to go to. We want you to go there. We want you to promote your pack. It's just that that's a one of 10 things priority that you need for people to do. So if they're, if, you, if you've been in the past, your pack has said, we're doing our sign up night and it's going to be at the back to school night because that's the most time that well, we will not see more people any other time of the year. You're not wrong. It just so happens that those same people have come there with a different purpose than to join your pack that evening or to join your troop that evening. Their purpose is to put their supplies down, meet three teachers, make sure their kid has money in their lunch account, make sure they sign up for sign, sign up for whatever programs they're supposed to be involved with at the school. And they'll see your booth and maybe they'll come into a sign up sheet, but they're not going to sign up right there. You have to have a standalone sign up night, preferably at your school. But being there is huge. You won't get better promotion. You won't have more people stop by and look at look at what you have to do, especially if you're really great display or whatever. But the actually getting them to sign up that night, it, it, I don't want to say it's not enough, but it, it's really tough. Most of those, if you get one or two kids to sign up, families to sign up, you consider it a really great sign up. Standalone sign up sites, if you promote them in the right way, or we're talking like 10 to 15 to 20 youth joining uh, because they've come there to join. They came to your sign up night because they want to join scouting, not because they need to drop off the backpack or meet the teachers. So I just want to stress that. We had a lot of units last year that used the back to school night as their sign up night and didn't sign up any more kids right after that. So, um, so I'll reiterate this schedule sign up night two to three weeks after the school year has started. Um, not the first week of school, there's just too much going on, families are too busy, but enough time where you can get flyers into a school or enough time to promote in, in the community um, in many different ways, which we'll talk about. But uh, keep it up into the school year that um, families can prioritize going to that side of night. You can't say, well, we're just too busy for the first week of school, there's too much going on. Um, so go to the school night, sign up night, back to school night, have your sign up night information there, have a flyer there, put a flyer in the school. Um, we'll talk a little bit about that too. Flyers. So we, we um, have a flyer. Uh, we have multiple flyers. There's some around the room here, uh, but we have probably six or seven flyers in the past 10 years or so that we can make for your unit. So if you're trying to do sentiments, you don't have to make your own flyer. We can make them for you. They're branded from our national organization. They're really great looking flyers. And we can put all the information you want on those flyers and Get you the, the number you need. Um, one request we have is to get the, to, to use this link. And again, I'll send this out to everyone so you can use it. We'll also send it out via email. But um, this link is how you fill out a, a, basically a Google form or a Microsoft form where you put all the data in to actually create your flyers for the, the fall. So you may not have that data right now because you haven't figured out exactly what night you're going to do your sign up. That's okay. Um, as you get closer, this link will be important. Produce the fun number of flyers you need. We can also do multiple sets of flyers. If you say, oh, well, we'd like to do one for our, for our back to school night, and we'd do like to do another set the week before our actual site of night. We can do that. We've got 25,000 flyers in, in a room in, a, in our office right now, and kind of even more downstairs. We, we have lots of materials to share with everyone. We just need you guys to ask. So it, it'd, be, it'd be really great if you did. Um, and lastly, these are some really big things. Uh, if you can get access to a school talk, um, and what, what we do with those, it's kind of like a pep rally. Um, a, a school talk, um, I don't think there was a school in the 90s or 2000s or no, 2000 maybe, but 80s or 90s that didn't get a school talk or before that. When school talks are something we go into a cafeteria, we go into a, a classroom to classroom. Rich brought some flyers here, thanks, Rich. Um, and we share information about scouting. We, we get the kids excited about joining scouting. That can either occur with the uh, scout leader from your unit going in talking and kind of do that pep rally, or our staff can go in in uniform and talk about all the fun things we do in scouting. It's a pretty cool experience because you'll see a lot of youth that they may see this, they can put it in their take home folder. So they see the flyer, it's put in their take home folder. They don't necessarily know what it is. Um, unless their parent knows what it is. Their parent you might have an alum whose their mom was a, their mom, both wow. parents, and so it was my household. I have four children. My wife sees these flyers. I don't see flyers. She sees the flyer. And she would say, well, that works for the Boy Scouts. Maybe we should check this out. But some parents might say, I was a scout. Let's check it out. Or some 
some parents might say, my dad was the cup master. It would be a lot of fun to do scouts together. But I, what I will tell you is that number is shrinking. The, the number of alumni we have and the number of kids, youth that participate in scouting that have children now has diminished. And I'm sad to say, but it's true. So we need to find alternative ways and new ways to reach families. So the scout talk and the school talk is a really big way of doing that, making sure we have opportunities to bypass the parents just knowing what scouting is and just tell the story of scouting to the youth directly and get them excited about it. We hand these flyers or other materials to them and go home and say, I want to join Cub Scouts if I live here. We did school talks two weeks ago at one of our schools in, in Frontier District, and uh, we had 15 kids that were interested in joining, and every single one of them, we gave a flyer, and I told them to put it in their, their shoe um, so that it smelled really bad, and they could pull it out of their shoe and tell their mom or dad that they had a smell gram for them, and they needed to, they needed to smell their flyer and join Cup Scouts. Um, so you can find creative ways to get kids interested, have a fun time, get them excited about scouting and stuff. It's really big to coordinate with your district executive or your membership chair to know if that, that is happening so we can support you. And if there's multiple classrooms we're doing talks in, we can make sure every classroom gets a talk. You're not having to skip classrooms because you don't have time to do them all. So we'll have questions and answers at the end too. So if you have comments or questions, save them, try to get through this so we can get you guys home and uh, not have to spend all night talking about membership, but I, I wouldn't mind, but um, we'll keep going. So promotion. Uh, promotion is extremely important. Uh, what I would, I would say there's, there isn't a silver bullet. A lot of times, unfortunately, um, this is the only way people promote. This flyer, for those of you online, I'm holding the flyer. Um, I would say for a lot of PACs, the flyer is the method of recruitment. It is the way they recruit. Um, and what I'll tell you is, is that, it's, again, there's lots of variables that either cause the flyer to be effective or not effective. If you drop them off at school, there's five or six people that have to handle this flyer before it gets to the person who's going to look at it and make a decision about it. Uh, a, a, a office assistant needs to take it and they need to actually put them in the box for the teachers. The teacher, the teacher may or may not decide to put them inside folders for kids. Or they may hand it off to someone else who is an assistant for them or a student teacher and say, put these in the folders. They may or not may or not do it. Then there's the variable of this actual youth taking it home and giving it to their parents. Um, that's a whole other var variable. So a flyer isn't foolproof. You can be, I can't tell you how many times I've been done sign up night and I hear from the cub master or person who's in charge of the sign up saying, my kid never even got a flyer. And that's that's what I need to uh, stress is that there's lots and lots of different ways we can do that. And what I recommend doing is and challenge you all to do is to try to find seven ways to communicate with people about your sign up night. Um, seven points of contact. If you look through Facebook, and we'll talk a little bit about Facebook in a little bit, um, I see the same ad around the same time every month about haircut. Um, I, I, I get, you can tell I get my haircut in a great close. Um, and I, I scroll through Facebook, and around the time when I normally get my haircuts, there's an algorithm that tells them this guy goes to your place. Put an ad for a deal on on great clips on there about three times we scroll through that day on facebook um, we need scouting to have that same kind of appeal to you we need to have a, a talk we need to have a postcard or a yard sign or a billboard like tina was talking about where um we're visible in the community and the only thing that they see to join isn't just this but it's a lot of other things so i'm not going to read through every single one of these but i want what i want to stress is is that some of the ones we're going to talk about tonight are specifically peer-to-peer -peer recruiting, which I haven't read here on, the, on, the, on there. We're going to talk about geofencing, which is a, a tool we used prior to the pandemic that because you are all on today, um, one of the, I guess it's an incentive for you for being here and an incentive for those that are online. Um, we're, we're going to pay for geofencing for your units. Um, and I want to talk more about uh, geofencing, but I'm going to because you're committed, you've demonstrated you're interested in recruiting youth. We wanted to invest in your pack being or troop being really successful at it. Um, another thing I want to talk about that I think is one of the things that was most effective for my pack personally was a uh, uniform days and service projects. Those were also extremely, extremely valuable. Having, and I'll stress, having a, a first grader or a second grader wear a uniform to school is one thing. What I will tell you is if a fifth grader wears their Weeblos um, gear to a school and walks through the cafeteria, I can tell you those kindergarten, first graders, and second graders 
if you if you see that followed up by the scout talk, there is nothing cooler to a first grader than a fifth grader. They they they, they think they're the coolest people on the face of the earth. And if they see them wearing a uniform and they see them being in scouting, they want to do it too. Um, it isn't any different for girls or boys. They they think those kids are the coolest kids around. They see it and they say, I want to do that too. Um, so wearing uniform base, all these things are extremely important. Uh, but uh, all these materials are also can be found at um, market the uh, scoutingwire.org, the marketing and membership hub. There's just tens of thousands of pictures and tools you can use. So it's very, very, very valuable. Um, another thing we use to try to recruit youth and get them interested in joining and, and also deliver the program is an incentive item. Last year we used a uh, rocket. Um, we had some uh, execution problems, necessarily, not necessarily like getting the rockets to people, but organizing a way to shoot the rockets off and to effectively utilize them. Um, this year we're working on, uh, we're not working, we're, we're going to order flyers. They're going to be branded. They might not be this color. Um, they might be changed to like more of a, a red, white, and blue kind of scouts kind of theme. But um, we're going to do the gliders. We're also going to be working on trying to provide um, everybody with a sheet of how the gliders can be used as part of your program and as part of earning like STEM Nova awards. So that when you get them, you're not only utilizing putting the gliders together and doing a fun activity, hopefully at one of your first activities with your new scouts, but you're also able to give them some advancement and some, some, some rewards for putting them together and not just make it a fun activity, but also make it uh, something where they're earning something out of it. Um, gliders will be given on paid membership. That means we're in, every youth that joins, officially joins, should get in a glider. Um, and we'll do our best to make sure that uh, there's enough gliders also that if your pack or wants to purchase more gliders, so everyone in your pack gets a glider, that they're available at our scout shop. Um, one of the other things we're going to do is have them have you purchase those at cost. So I'll stress that we're not, the, the scout shop won't be doing a markup on them. Um, they, for the average cost of these is right around $250 to $3. So that's how much they cost them. For the glider, so if you got a question? I'll try to repeat it. So, um, so are you giving us the gliders ahead of time? Because I know we've had stuff like that before, and then not everybody's gotten it because it went all, you know, to the early birds. So, is are you guys holding on to the gliders, and then when we hand you our, you know, people who signed up, are you going to give us the gliders then? So that is the plan right now, but I'll stress that I'm still working with our, our team on how we can execute giving the gliders out. The number one issue we, we don't want to run into with the gliders is that we've given out each pack a proportionate number of gliders. And then let's say a pack, we've given them 20 and we recruit five. And then another pack is recruited 25 and we've given them 10. Then we're running into the same problem where a bunch of new kids don't have the gliders for signing up and a bunch of kids in the pack that says, I, I hate this because I've got his trust for the <laughs> But somehow those gliders just fell off the truck and they don't know where they are anymore. And we can't, and then we have to order more gliders and wait till the end of the year to get a bunch of kids who already actually signed up with gliders. So it's, it's one of those things where it's a balance between um, trying to get them instant gratification so they get it that night and they get excited about it and also trying to make sure we don't run out of a run out of a item. So um, it, because we have three months till we're kind of distributing them, we're still kind of in the works about how we could do it. It might be a thing where we give you a, a limited number based on how you've recruited in the past and then fulfill a back end of them. Um, we just got to see based on kind of how well we can plan and how well we can distribute them. So I, 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 I waffle in a little bit of the answer, but the, the, the kind of our method has always been you give us the applications, we give you the incentive. But I know I've also been in councils where you give the incentive out right, right at the sign-up night, you get, or excuse me, at the distribution materials night, you get all your incentive plans right away. So um, to be continued. So, um, all right. So just in the interest of time, I'm going to move forward again. Uh, we'll have Q&A then, uh, but again, you can't purchase those as well. Uh, this is just a preview of some of the materials you can get on the marketing hub. Uh, want to want to stress that there's some really great um, adventure on theme materials, and that is the theme as well. We didn't catch that when we did our presentation so far. Is it is adventure on? So you'll see that on pretty much everything. Hashtagging adventure on, on pictures on social media, um, and, and, and that, that theme is runs across um, nationally. So if you, if national does decide to take money and run a national ad. 
I want to hold your breath, you know, but I mean, I, I, I've not witnessed that my entire career, other than the first year I did when I worked, the first year I worked for the Boy Scouts um, was during our 100 year anniversary, and we ran some national ads for that, but uh, I've not seen it since. Um, so that doesn't mean we couldn't do something locally, though, or find some creative ways to get uh, PSAs, and we'll talk about that a little bit, too. Um, so uh, there, here's some materials. There's bookmarks, there's banners, there's there's just so much stuff that, that uh, really, I think, is eye-catching and appealing. So I'd encourage you to go on there, explore. I mean, they're all just free. You can download them, um, and uh, we can manipulate them as well. If you want to have your pack logo on there, or like have a have some sort of a special message on something, um, again, we can we can help. Uh, we have a marketing team that can make changes in these ways that will help you. Yes, so. Will there be a poster that so, we could take to schools? Larger, because you know my home computer only. Yeah, so to ask, there's a poster. We do have a poster. Um, last year we made a poster. It was like a legal size poster. I think we're going to change to a little bit bigger one this year. Like the cost, um, we've defrayed some costs, um, so we have some ability to build a little larger poster. Um, so we will be providing a poster, probably two posters to each pack um, when we do our fall materials distribution. So you know, we get a poster that you put up. Um, okay, next thing. This, this is, and I'll, I'll jump back to why social media is important. I think we talked about that with OSU. We talked about it um, just now in the room about social media. Um, so, so last evening, I'll use an example, a personal example. I apologize. I just I kind of tell stories just the way I'm operating. Um, last evening, my wife and I had our 15th wedding anniversary, um, and we went out to dinner. Um, and, and where we decided to go to dinner was a restaurant that uh, one of my wife's friends posted a picture of her eating food with her husband at the week prior. So she, my wife was on Facebook or Instagram and scrolling through her social media and said, Whoa, that food looks delicious. And she, I was sitting on the couch like late at night after her kids go to bed. She said, Hey, check this out. Doesn't this food look really good? And um, she said, Yeah, Chelsea, her, her friend's name is Chelsea. And she's Chelsea. Chelsea said it was delicious. It was really, really good. Um, I didn't know this restaurant existed. I'd driven by it about 100 times, never been interested in going to it. Um, I probably had ads posted on my Facebook about the restaurant and never gone to it. But the reason why my wife and I went to our 15th mother had was kind of an important one to this restaurant was because a friend referred her to it. Our friend, our, her a friend she trusted, she thinks it's cool, said, this is really neat. You should go to this. And they didn't pay her to do it or do anything that made it special other than she said, I really had a good time with my husband here. We can do the same thing with scouting. Every single one of our members can do the exact same thing and have a hundred times bigger impact in this wire um, by making a post, a person giving a personal testimony and invitation on social media or in person through an invitation card um, to other people in their circle of friends. Um, again, people see me, I work for the Boy Scouts. So if I post with my son and say, my, my son just joined Cub Scouts, I will get a bunch of people like it. They'll be excited. I don't know if they'll necessarily have more people join. But what I will tell you is if the mom that isn't a leader in your pack who doesn't post all the time about Cub Scouts takes a picture with her son on the first day back to the Cub Scout meetings in August and says, we are so excited for this year Cub Scouts. We had so much fun at day camp. And I can't wait for my son to cross over in the Scouts PSA and be part of a troop. And this program has been so amazing for our family. And then a picture of her son and her like in front of a, in front of the, the, the Cub Scout meeting at school or whatever, that is worth 10,000 of these flyers. That, 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 is, that is a meaningful testimony about why scouting is so important. But what I'll stress is, is before social media and before flyers or ads on TV about scouting, that is how people join scouting. I, I can't tell you how many Cub Scout or how many scout leaders I've met in my career who are in their 80s or 90s that I've met um, who said, I joined Scouts because somebody walked down the street and asked me if I wanted to come to a meeting. Um, that was how I joined. I had three friends that said, are you going to come to the next meeting? You need to bring 25 cents. And they, that's how they joined Scouts. So what I'll stress is that's not broken. It's not, it's not, it's not broken. Yes, it does cost a lot more than 25 cents. Um, but, <laughs> but, and I won't refer that. But, but it, what I'll tell you is that social media is that way of walking down the street today. So you posting, yes, that's great. You're all invested. You're here. 
but it's other people in your pack or you posting and saying, hey, we're all gonna, we're gonna do a social media blitz. We're going to say, join scouting, join our pack, have fun with your family, join all these other families in this, this great experience. Um, that is powerful and it's gonna make a huge difference. So I'd encourage you to develop a plan to do that. So talk a lot about that because I'm really passionate about that. I really think that is how my, my wife, she, my daughter's 34. She has four kids. She's not, that's kind of abnormal to have four kids, but she's, she's right in the core age when kids are joining Cub Scouts. The parent, that is her, that in Spotify, if there's an on Spotify that she listens to all the time, those are the two ways that she would probably see something other than the flyer coming. She wouldn't, there's an email from the school, unless it's something about our kids, she doesn't pay attention to it. Um, uh, those two methods are really how, how what her attention. So right so start, think about your market. Think about people that um, you're communicating with. Think about um, the parents of your pack or troop and how they communicate. So we'll talk a little bit more about that, but next I want to move forward really quick. Geofencing. So geofencing, what is geofencing? Oh, shit. So geofencing is when you drive through a specific area. Can, Facebook, hold on. Can, can, can somebody... Uh, virtual boundaries around around a specific geographic area so that when a person's in that geographic boundary and they meet the, the segments that you've selected for your ad, a Facebook ad pops up when they're scrolling. So it's, it's kind of creepy when you think about it, but that, that, that's how they do a lot of their advertising. So um, we did this geofencing activity in 2017 and 2018 across the country. Our national office organized it. I'll say they kind of struggled with parts of it, um, we, we did geofencing in the Three Fires Council where I was in the western suburbs of Chicago, and we had people that were getting our ads in like Kansas and like Cleveland and so we had, we had they, they, we did it by schools, and sometimes the person to the national that was setting up the geofence couldn't figure out the school, and they put the wrong place. What I'll tell you is, is that we'll, we'll have a little more attention to detail because we're spending our own money on it, and we're going to make sure that the appropriate school and the appropriate geofence, but what we do ask you to do is similar to that that uh, flyer form. We're going to add a piece of that flyer where so you can indicate I'd like to do geofencing for my for my school. And what we'll end up doing is, the, and the, what we're going to try to do is, is to try to limit our geofence to the geographic area that would be most impactful. And our specific focus is going to be on school pick up and drop off lines. That's our that's our specific focus. Is parents that are driving and waiting to pick up their kids. I do this. Not every day, but most days with my my daughter, she wakes up at like 5.30 in the morning to get to school and she has band practice, so I drop her off at school. And I sit in line while everyone's getting dropped off and I scroll through my phone and look at my emails, look at stuff. I'm sitting there for probably about 15 minutes, 10 minutes. Um, it's moms and dads in line with their kids. And it's a middle school, but elementary schools are the same way. We identify a geofence around the school. People are sitting around the school at different times scrolling through Facebook, and all of a sudden an ad pops up that says, join pack one, two, three, four. Their sign-up night is a week from now. Here's the event for their sign-up night. And they say, oh yeah, well, I got the flyer and I remember my, my daughter coming home and saying she really wanted to join. Um, let me check this out. I click on it and they say, oh, well, sign-up next time. It's another touch. It's another impact. It's another impression on people that they want to join. Um, like I said, our incentive for you today is that I have a list the people that are invested in doing our plan through here tonight. So we're, we're um, for sure going to have you participate in this if you want to. We don't have to, but what we do is we probably, I don't know if we want, we will have the, the unit create a Facebook event and promote it and, and give you funding for doing it or for the council do it. I've seen a mix between those, whether it's successful or not. <laughs> uh, but uh, what we are gonna do is commit to work with you on uh, doing it if you want to, so we can use this tool that's, really inexpensive and really effective. So um, if you have questions on details, uh, the, the new guy, uh, he's Brian Scotty, but he's not Brian Scotty anymore. Let's do that. It's okay. The new Brian on Scouting wrote an article about it. Um, Aaron. Aaron on Scouting wrote, wrote an article about it, how it's effective, uh, which I'll also try to share with people who attended the training, but it's, it's a good tool. So, um, all right. Peer-to-peer -peer recruiting. Again, same concept as our, our, our uh, Facebook post. This is a really direct recruitment. I want to stress that it's a tool we want you to use. Um, 
I'd encourage you to challenge every family to participate in peer-to-peer -peer recruiting um, and, and make it a part of your plan. Um, one thing that would be extremely effective, especially if your school does not allow typical flyers, one thing that you allow is physical invitations. My, my son's school does not allow physical flyers, but he brings a birthday invitation in the hands out to kids. They give it out. Um, there, there's invitations being given out to lots of things that happen. So it's a way to work around that system by having an individual invitation. It doesn't even necessarily have to happen in school. It could happen in a sporting event. It could happen at a festival. It could happen during a parade. Um, peer, peer, peer invitations are really important. So prior to your sign-up night, I encourage you to make these invite cards. The invite cards um, are located online. We can make them for you, but they're located at that scouting wire. Um, uh, there's uh, several different templates. Um, the details that are included are things like the location where the pack meets, uh, when the events happen, or when the sign-up night is happening, or when the meetings are happening. Need your contact information or at least a general email address for people to contact. And it's really impactful on the scout and share things with their friends. Um, here's what they look like. I know it's a little bit hard to see online, online maybe, I'm not sure, but um, it, it, this one, the fishing theme one, but you can see there's slots there where you can literally put in the different uh, categories and they come in like a little 10-pack um, where you uh, cut them off and then kids bring them and give up invites themselves. Again, much more impactful than a flyer going home in a take-home folder or some sort of email newsletter. This is a direct invitation saying, I want to do Cub Scouts with you. There's nothing cooler for kids than doing it that way. So, um, all right. So we're going to go through this um, in online people. You're going to be along for the ride on this. We're not going to do it right this second, but we're going to do it in our breakout session. We're going to do our four station model, your sign up model, the demonstration and how you can do your signups. Um, really successful all 13 years of my career i've been doing uh, some sort of model like this but the the, the four stations include a welcome or signing table uh of what we do table or kind of what scouting is all about uh a sign up using electronic um applications or paper backups in case electronics don't work for your your, your unit for whatever reason uh, but having space to actually sign up that night they came to sign up for scouting if they leave without signing up expect half of them not to come back you came to do something, you came to do it. You didn't you didn't come to learn about scouting and then come to another meeting to sign up. You didn't come to uh, hear what great things the PAC's doing and then say, well, we're not signing up anybody right now. We're gonna wait till next next month to do it for whatever reason. Um, they came to sign up, sign them up, get them, get them, get them, in, get them registered. Uh, and then finally a checkout where they have a QA and kind of learn what, where they go next. Well, I can't stress that enough either. Um, you don't sign up for other activities and not know when your first practice is. You don't sign up for other activities and not know what your schedule is. I mean, it's very, very important that people leave the meeting knowing what is next. If they don't know what's next, they expect they will not come back. If, if you say, things are kind of up in the air right now, you don't know when our next meeting is going to be. They're not coming to your next meeting. So you don't have one. You don't know when they don't know when it, you don't know what it is. How are they supposed to come? So you, it's very hard, and I know in other situations I deal all the time. You might need leaders. You might need to figure that out. Then make a parent meeting. Find find a find a spot where you're like, we're not going to have a Cub Scout meeting yet, but we're going to find a way to make a calendar. We're going to find a way to keep moving forward. We can help you with that. Invite your district executive or a commissioner to come with to help you with that. But make sure they know when the next meeting is, where how to get the whole of you. Um, okay. So another thing I want to I want to stress really quick is things you do after your sign up night. So making sure you approve all your submitted applications is vital. It's really important because the way that those youth get into your BS, or excuse me, to your um, goodness gracious scout book system, uh, the way that a youth gets in, in, into your system is by getting approved for their registration. If they go online and they pay online, you don't really have to do much other than just approve them. And then they just go right into scout book. It's literally Weeks ahead of what you do when you submit a paper application to us. It's so much better than what it was three, four years ago. It is the way to go. It gets them signed up pretty much immediately. Within 48 hours, a lot of times last year, kids were getting on the scout book. You could communicate with them right away. You didn't have to enter it in. It's beautiful. Um, make sure every family receives a welcome phone call or communication. That's also very important. If they sign up and let's say they come to your, your sign up night, they just said, Oh, I went to be a scout and I signed up. 
if you approve them, welcome them. Say, hi, I'm the Cub Master. Hi, I'm the new, new member coordinator. And we're so excited to have you in our pack. Our next meeting is two weeks from now. Please come, if you can't make it, here's our next meeting. Uh, but having that welcome and knowing that they're part of the team and they're part of the, the, the unit really is important. Um, review your performance versus your goals and versus where you did last year, your district executive or uh, membership chair can, can do that. Identify additional sign-up nights. So, so finding different ways you can do a follow-up sign-up nights. There's cool things going on at the school. If there's a festival in town, if, it, if you've done your sign-up night, maybe in late August or early September, um, October trunk or treats or October uh, kind of opportunities where you can do something that invites the community in are great opportunities to recruit new youth as well. But don't stop recruiting after the one time. There's going to be youth that, and families that can't make it to that first sign-up night. Please give them opportunities to sign up uh, and don't just kind of cut them off there. Um, review the sign-up info, um, so the signage sheet that you're provided and, and utilize. We'll talk about it in the next room. Um, make sure you follow up with people that signed up but didn't complete the sign up process. They signed in but didn't sign up. Uh, make sure that you still want them to join and follow up with them and encourage them to come to the next meeting. Yeah, you didn't sign up yet. It's okay. Next meeting, we're going to talk about popcorn and there's a scholarship form. I don't know if you saw it at the table, but you can join and use a scholarship if, you need, if, you, if the cost is a concern or figure out a way to make it work. Um, Making sure that you have a new unit uh, or excuse me, a new youth orientation, a new family orientation night. Some packs couple that with their popcorn kickoff. Some do them standalone. They, some do it before their pack meeting where they do like a half an hour beforehand where you orientate your families. Um, I would say if you do that the same night as the sign up night, expect to have a long night. That's the only thing I'd just say. If, you, if you're going to do the orientation, and the sign up on the same night, it's an hour and a half. It's like what we're doing right now. It's a long night. And expect the kids to eventually break. I'll put it that way. They, 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 half an hour to 45 minutes is the ideal time to get a bunch of first graders and second graders and first graders in the room, kindergartners in the room, and keep them energized, keep them entertained, and, not, and get them excited about coming to the next meeting. If you have an hour and a half to two hour long first meeting for a kindergartner, expect they're going to at some point just flip out. Is that unless you just have the best, coolest thing that to be the whole world at time. But uh, so make it manageable. Make sure that they can get in and out. They came to sign up, have them sign up. You don't need to explain them every step of Cub Scouts every one night. But you can overwhelm people. They're like, wow, I didn't know I was doing this. Insane. Um, so have an orientation. Um, participate in council fall activities. Um, most of our dates are set for that. We're going to put into your packet something called a hot card. When you when you get when you get your packets in August, you're going to get a card that it has all the different activities that are happening in the fall. On. And it's something that you can give as almost like a ticket, that golden ticket to the families when they when they join. You say, hey, these are all the things you can go to. And here's that. Here's the fun things you can do in scouting outside of our pack. So that's something that'll be part of it. So participating in shootery. Um, I know um, we'll, we'll talk a little bit. We'll kind of talk about it, but in Frontier District, they they can't make it to shootery all the time. If you live in Fort Smith, you're not driving three hours to Delaware to go shootery. Um, Frontier has been creative about creating these uh, events called Adventure Ons, where they have like a half day event where kids and families can try out Cub Scouts. And, and it's also a doubles to recruitment and a kind of fun activity for a, a new family to do who can't make the trek to shootery or Monster Manish or whatever event we're doing and they're more localized but a little bit shorter and uh, give them a taste of scouting so hopefully they want to keep doing it. So um, your pack can do something like that. The only thing you can't do is it's not a district activity, so you can't like shoot the guns and do our tree at the pack event, but um, having some fall activities that are available are really cool. And then lastly, um, we're not going to jump into too much popcorn. We've got a whole cadre of popcorn activities to do this summer and James Doctors in the room are kind of our popcorn guru. And uh, But uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, Getting them to sell popcorn right away um, is huge. They're energized. They want to do scouting. I think what's the number, James? Like four hundred something dollars. Four hundred thirty bucks if they can pay for their uh, yearly registration. Yep. So four hundred thirty dollars. They sell four thirty. You've got a plan in your pack or troop uh, to have some of that money distributed back to the youth or spend it equally and what they get their share back in some way. Um, you can pay four thirty, which isn't a lot of popcorn, unfortunately. Um, it can pay for a, a registration for a year for a scout. So, um, 
All right, so we're going to talk a ton and we're going to talk some more when we move over to the next room. Got a question in the back. Yes, sir. Good question on the online application. So when you do the online application, you pay. That only pays though for federal and council for national council. I, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure you're going to have to get another check. So one recommendation and what we did in my pack, we collected dues. But what we did is we collected dues at a charter fund. That was what our solution to that problem was with online applications. We said, okay, we're going to have you sign up um, for scouting through the end of the year. Um, and then at the end of the year, we're going to do this process where we renew for the entire year. And that's when we'll collect our pack dues. So we were out front about it. We didn't try to pull the wool over their eyes and collect one check and then collect another check. They're just like, hey, this is kind of like, I want to say it's your trial period because we want to lock them in for when to keep them participating. But hey, we're going to collect this, this kind of like entry level registration fees now. And then everybody in our pack in November, we do these things called dues where we kind of get all the money for our program for the whole year, the whole calendar year. Um, there's lots of different ways around it, but yes, I, I know that. Um, there's a drawback of online applications. So there isn't a way to funnel the dues to you because it's all based on the national online um, system. So uh, yeah, another question. Yeah, what's the best way to handle uh, like a school that more than one Mac might claim to handle the Cupmaster to Cupmaster? Oh uh, yeah, so, so the, the question for everyone online is if there's a school that multiple packs uh, want to recruit from. Um, I would say that coordinating with uh, any PACs that are in the general vicinity of the school on who kind of should recruit from it, or um, one of the things that I would always default to is who has youth from this school already. I mean, that's that's the natural thing to gravitate into as a professional scouter and as a cup master was, oh, you, you mean you have like six kids that already are going to your PAC from the school. That makes sense that you would continue to recruit from there because they would see familiar faces. Oh, you have a dumb leader that also has a son that goes to school there. That makes sense. Um, whereas there are some packs in which they want to expand how many kids are uh, providing opportunities to. Um, on a professional side, our number one goal is to make sure that every pack has a, uh, every school has a pack associated with them. And that's, we, we have the number of youth. Um, Columbus is one of the only markets in the whole state of Ohio that's just exploding with growth. There's new schools being built all the time. I know it's not that way at every single geographic area of, our, of Ohio or our council, but there's room for packs at every school. Um, we just need to effectively execute this plan and recruit youth. And I think every school could have its own pack and it could be really truly neighborhood based. But um, yeah, communication and kind of, and if you need a mediary or need like a, a person to kind of like uh, navigate that conversation, our professional staff would love to do our commissioner or staff. But, um, um, really quick, I'm gonna, we're, we're almost done, I promise. We're gonna go through a couple of different things and I'm gonna get let um, Ken do a really quick ad. For uh, some training stuff, like um, which I hope you remember, so we talked about. Um, so main things, you get nothing else from this presentation right now. I mean, these are the main things I'd ask you to remember. So if you have one slide, the circle in this is the one step. Schedule your sign up night and request flyers. That's a big step. So making sure you know when your standalone sign up night is happening, or how it's your word, uh, and they're not doing anything else that night. That sign up night, getting out of schedule, getting flyers ordered. Attend a back to school night so you can promote your sign up night and get interest in promoting your pack. Um, promoting your sign up night seven different ways. Every youth that attends should be signed up. So when you do your sign up night, making sure every single scout signs up, um, and, or at least you get their information of why they didn't, so you can kind of figure it out. Um, proving applications the night they sign up so they're already in the system, they're communicating to part of your pack right away. Ensuring your new families know when the next meeting is and who their leader is. So that's the two things. Sign up for T-ball. You know when your first practice is, and you know who your coach is. Maybe I've been out. Not all T-balls are made alike. But Cub Scouts, we're, we're, we're more organized than T-ball. We can do this. We, we need to have a, a pack contact and when the first meeting is. Um, and then uh, have an orientation meeting where all the pack families come, learn more about um, all the things your pack does, and, and, and get excited about the year of scouting you're going to have. And then finally, grow your unit. Grow. Having more kids in your pack and that means you'll have more leaders. It means your scout will have more fun. It might seem scary because you're going to have all these more kids. And I don't even, I don't know how I'm going to take out all these more families. With more youth, especially kindergarten first graders, comes more adults. 
they have to come to the meetings with their sons or daughters. They, they can't drop them off when they're that age. Our primary important MO that joins scouting is kindergarten, first grade. Recruit them, get them involved, give them jobs to do, they'll become leaders. And hopefully they'll become train leaders. So I'll end up about training things really quick. And then we're going to go into our breakout session um, and get you guys out here before 8 o'clock. Okay, so it's it's not really an ad as much as it is to draw the correlation. Okay. Every scout deserves a trained leader. We've all heard that, we've all seen it, we've all read it, probably we've all said it. But there is the correlation then of what does a trained leader do that helps with the retention. So we talk a lot about recruiting, but we also want to talk about retention. And if you can convince the, the leaders in your troop to get trained, the adults in your troop and the youth to get trained, that will help you with retention and recruitment. And there's all kinds of training. There's obviously YPT, which is very important. And but there's also position-specific training, and there's WIMDAC. And there are plenty of ways that you can find out online when that training is going to happen. Happened other than with that this fall, uh, starting in August. But uh, the point is, training isn't an afterthought. It's actually part of the membership program because a trained leader is a committed leader in the best way because they want to be there. They, they understand the program better. They have a network that they can reach out to and uh, perhaps on to, 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 to work through issues that they might see in their pack or in their troop. And, and uh, so think about training, uh, think about asking your, your peers in, in your packs and in your troops um, or in your districts, but are they trained and, and help them to get trained and if they need help or if you don't want to, if you can't figure out how to do it, talk to one of the professional staff. Call me if you want. Um, reach out to us in the training. But again, it's not an afterthought. It is part of the program and it will make a better program for everyone, the youth and the adults. Thank you very much. Any questions that Ben or I couldn't answer? Have any answers? Or you yeah, questions? Um, how do we know which schools we are affiliated, our units are affiliated with? So, so we have a chart we've been keeping up. Sure. Yeah, sorry. The question is, how do you know what schools you're here from? Um, what your what schools you're affiliated with? We have a chart we've been um, keeping for probably the last six to seven years of all the schools in the entire Columbus metro area, along with every other area of the council, um, and which packs recruit from them. The number one variable in that is not so much the schools. Well, some there's a few every year that shut down. There's a few every year that can create it. The number one variable is how many packs we have to recruit. And that's the number that's drastically changed well, since the pandemic. We, we literally cut the number of packs we had in half over a three year span, which means that you, as a Cub Master, some of you new Cub Masters or new scout leaders, were asked to take on more schools to recruit from. Um, and we typically do that. Um, we, would, we, we will contact you and say, hey, um, these are the schools that your pack has recruited from in the past. Um, if you're a new pack, we kind of already identified that. So, hey, you're taking this one and let the other school, the other pack know, hey, this new pack is they're grooving and we're we're like, we're going to have them recruit from the school this year. And um, that, that's kind of how it's going. Um, but yeah, so we'll identify um, to you where you've recruited in the past and then also talk to you about maybe opportunities where there could be recruiting kind of islands where there, there still need to have recruitment set. So, that's your question. Awesome. Um, yeah. I'll be first and then Sarah. So, okay. so real quick question. Um, first one, you, you decided that uh, you would cover us for geofence. Will that also include what TikTok, they don't call it that. They they refer to it as geotracking. It would just be for Facebook. Just would, be for Facebook. Not, would, if you, but if you'd like to expand to doing it outside of um, Facebook, um, you're welcome to. I, I, we are limiting our geofencing to Facebook. Um, and it's not that uh, other social medias aren't valuable too, it's just that seems to be for the demographic we're looking for, which is not Cub Scouts, it's 
Cub Scout moms and Cub Scout dads, that is the tool for that age group. Um, so that's that's why we honed in on that and want to do that really well. So. Okay, second real quick question. Um, who would I talk to in council about packs or troops that may have had to shut down during COVID in our area and um, being able to you're, contact you're that area? Executive or registrar or maybe even a commissioner. Could, any of those professional people over that volunteer liaison and commissioner could tell you that. We, I know I gave a list of our district executives of all the units that folded over the last three years. So they know that, um, and I know that. So we could gladly have a conversation about what schools they might have recruited from and, and what that looked like. Okay. Yes. Yes. Two questions. First one, uh, I see the, the adventure on. Have we phased out Scout Me In? We, we're using that a lot of like our, our website things. So Have we phase that out? Should we move to adventure on? So if you go on to the next, the question is, if we phase out Scout Me In, um, if you go on to the national page, there's still some uh, data that there's still some, some materials that feature that. Anything that comes up from national news, though, over there, if it's an ad, if it's a Facebook a post, if it's a, a YouTube video, it's going to say Ventron is there. Yeah. They, they, they phased out. I think Scout Me In was uh, largely uh, a push during the girls joining Scouting. Yeah. And that was what they did. In, I, I was literally in Chicago at the time when they did a test study with the kids from Chicago. And they're like, the girls really liked the Scout Me In theme and they that. And so I think the Ventron was the response to COVID. It was like, let's, I think that during COVID, it was like explore the great, up to escape the great indoors or something like that. Like they did a theme around that. So they, they really, they, National has a marketing team where they do these tests where they'll bring in kids, bring in parents, and test five or six different slogans, and they just like go with one. Yeah. Kind of I love it. Yeah, we'll, we'll update our, we've got a website and some media presence, so we'll, we'll update that. And the second question was at the, the join night, are there activities that tend to work really well? Like, for example, like, I know some packs have done like, you know, Rocket Academy or Mad Science or, you know, carnivals, things like that. Are there those types of activities that tend to work really well? For so I, I think there's two different modes of thought. One, you can do a joining event, and that's mentioned a little bit in your play, our playbook, where you do an event where you invite the community and you say, we're going to have a carnival outside of where we meet. We're going to jump house and we're do all these activities. And you get a lot of people coming that would normally come. Um, if you were just doing a normal sign up night where they came to sign up for scouts, not necessarily all of them are going to join, but you're getting good exposure. Some people just come and have the fun activity and they take off. Sure. Um, most, if you have the ability to provide an activity for the youth while the parents are signing the scouts up, that is wonderful. Our, our um, four station model does not, that we're going to go to next and run through really quick, um, does not feature an activity for the youth. It's a, it's a quick model where they could do you could do it without having an activity. Um, as a as a district executive in northern Minnesota and northern Wisconsin, when I started, I would go to lots of sign nights where there was no pack, there was no troop in the town, and everyone had driven like 50 minutes to get to a meeting in the middle of like nowhere. Um, and I would typically do like paper airplane activities because I had I had paper and I literally would just set up an obstacle course around the side of the cafeteria where we could say, okay, I want all the parents to make a paper airplane with your son. I was just boys, make a paper airplane with your son, find whatever design you want to do. I've got five different designs here, make your paper airplane, decorate it. Um, and boys, now I want you guys to make it through this obstacle course. And then if they got done, I'd be like, who can throw the longest, who can throw the straightest, just make a big line on the ground. And I would talk to all the parents well, they're all going crazy with paper airplanes. And then I, that was my also my sales pitch to the leaders. It's like, hey, look how easy this meeting was. You literally just did paper airplanes with your sons. You've been here for 45 minutes. The meeting would have been done by now. And they had a blast. You don't, it's not that hard to do this thing. Um, so that was kind of, but yeah, um, a comment from the crowd. I don't know if you can speak. I don't know if you, if you want to come up here or not. If you'll go or not. But. Want to. <laughs> One thing to add, oh, I don't want to go up there. One thing to add to your join night, if you can have a hands-on activity, that makes the kids have fun, but you also want to make sure that your adults that are attending 
can witness the fun or participate in the fun. Because if you just have them walk around and just get up, gather all the information, that's not as exciting for them. And the whole point is you want to hook the entire family, not just the youth. Because you, you're, you're looking for volunteers. Um, but if you think about the events that you've had held throughout the, the year, think of those things. So if you could bring your time with Derby Track and have some Lego cars or or a rain gutter regatta with you, just so that they can see, hey, this is something that we do in our in our unit. And that brings them the excitement. But you want to make sure that it can be the fun can be had by everyone. But the more you can do hands-on, the the better. I'll summarize what Jojo just said for people online. Having an activity that puts the, the adults, the families, can you fit their, their perspective scout is really important. The last thing we'll say about this, and then I'm going to encourage us to all answer questions at the end, or can get answer questions that we want to go over the next step so you guys get a little bit of reason for um, Last thing I'll mention is the some of the best summer nights I've ever been to are where a troop is associated with the pack and comes and runs the activity. Um, the most recent one we did um, for a spring recruitment, um, we, we had three youth from the troop come and they had a button making machine and it doesn't seem like that great. They literally just had little circles and the kids could draw on the circle or cut a magazine out and like make a button. And the kids all made like four or five buttons and they like four or five of the moms that were there said, how often do they get to be with the older boys or the older scouts? This is exactly what I want. My son, I've never seen my son be this engaged in in what's what's happening right now, they're so excited to be hanging out with a middle school or high school age role model that they do a good kid. Um, so that was really neat too. So, but um, yes, 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 one more thing. And then we're thanks. Thanks. Um, this happened actually to me when we, we moved up to Columbus and a while back. And my son was already at a cup pack in a different city, Cincinnati. Um, and so don't overlook. The, there's a lot of transit people that transfer in or move around. Don't don't overlook those folks. They may not be a tiger, they may not be a lion, but they they still already might have somebody in scouts uh, at, a, at a higher level. And uh, don't don't forget about those folks. Try to get and encourage them to come to the site of that as well, uh, especially back to school. They're trying to learn people, learn friends, meet friends, and, and the community. So it's it's a good. Thing to tap into those if you can. So there may be questions online. I, I, I apologize, but just for the interest of time, we're going to jump into our next breakout session. I'll try to go online and answer any questions we haven't answered, or hopefully some, maybe some others have answered questions. Okay. I've, got, I've got Chaz Kenwell here. He's going to be my cameraman. We're going to switch. Switch. We're, we're going to our breakouts, and our, our next one is our walkthrough. I don't know if anyone, anyone can talk about repos recruitment, want to break away and do that with a group. That you can sit in this room right here and stay in here and talk about Weeblos recruitment if you want to, and I'll transition Weeblos. But right now, we're going to switch to the Saturday night walkthrough. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Um, and so I think you guys can all uh, follow along with me, which will be Chaz. Where I'm so all right, if you are, you're here, I'm from the Cup Scout, and everyone that could stand up. Everybody could stand up right over here and gather around. I'm just like uh, trying not to make people sick. Uh, all right, so Chance, do you get a good shot of the, the intro man here to Simon Kidman Elementary School? I'm saying we're here, we're doing it, I'm simulating for you. A sign up night at, at local elementary school. How you can set up that sign up night. So, first things first, you, and when you came to the meeting tonight, outside the building, you saw signs. There were some recruiting materials before the meeting. They should have gotten a flyer. And these are some stickers. Uh, we give out stickers to different youth. Uh, when we do our talks in schools, we'll give them a sticker and a flyer to join. We'll put these signs out in front of the school, in front of the place where you're driving in the school, in front of the pickup line. So, we really see those over and over again. Hopefully your sign says, join Cub Scouts Tuesday, August 19th, and uh, at this time, and then there's be a scout down around there, so they can't make it to the dance there, but having to join us sign up front, having some posters uh, in the windows, maybe on a bulletin board, and then I just have a present for the school this year. So come on in here. We have everybody go in the middle of the room.
gonna circle circle around this again. So one other thing I didn't mention is that uh, one of the things I like to do with my final nights is I like to have someone up front, you know, people there, or someone stand up front of the school, and as people are coming and greet them and say, hey, welcome to our final night attack, 200, um, uh, we're going to be in the cafeteria. So it gives them an immediate, like, well, okay, someone's here to get the scouts, you have scouts, you have, you have kids that are And two scouts here, the scouts are taking in and saying, Hey, welcome. Or he's introducing himself to the Cub Scouts that are going to join. That's really impressive to lock in. So, so the first thing you have in your sign up night is your sexual sign up. Because last year we had a QR code. Two packs used our QR code, really else anyone else did. So this year, you will all be receiving a sign in sheet. It's a triple you know order for them, uh, but it's got so it's a double actually. It's not a the double kit. Uh, but it, it, this side of the sheet basically has information like what's the staff's name, what grade are they in, what's the parent's name, as much contact information. So if for some reason they do not sign up, you have their contact information. You take a copy, you get a copy to the council so that they can help follow up as well and give them more touches on, hey, you didn't sign up. Sometimes people come to a sign up night and they don't sign up because of not reasons that they don't want to. It's because they don't, it just doesn't work for your pack meeting night. I can't tell you when people come and say, we do judo on Monday nights, and you guys meet on Monday nights. Guess what? We have hundreds of packs that meet on Tuesday nights and Wednesday nights and Thursday nights. They could join. So it shouldn't be an end of the starting degree because they can't join your pack. So we can still communicate with them about packs that are available to them. Another thing that every family should get, and I've got enough copies of these here. We're going to upload these to our, our site. These are our uh, welcome to new Cub Scout family flyers. There's information in it, like um, why why should you be part of Cub Scouting? How does it work? There's people standing each of the days and everything goes in the bed. And it is, how can you help? What are the different positions you're trying to help? How much does it cost? It's customizable too, so you can put your, you can put your uh, reviews in there. And then finally, that sheet is a spot where you put information like, well, my child, they can literally you can do this exercise. My child is in blank pack. Which means at this location, at this time, on this day, and my child's den leader, and you know, my child's den is this den, and it means this location, this time, and this time later. Uh, so that's another station in here. So you take this with them throughout the stations and fill this out so they know we're going to pre filled out how much den they're in. Um, they, they leave knowing when their next meeting is, who their leader is, what their contact information is. So this little sheet, we're going to make this available on our membership page so you can customize it for your pack. Um, it's a cool little resource. It's, yeah. Printed these on my personal printer. They're, they're not hard to print. They're easy. So. Those make sense that when they come to a join night, they could be so overwhelmed that them having that at home is when everything settles, they can go back, oh, wait, I have that book game. Let me go back for these other ones. So it's an extra help. So you guys can roll around here. So this is station number two. This is the what we do station. It's on your uh, playbook. It has a list of all the things that you should have at your table or what's like you have at your table. Um, this is a, a cool thing where I see it where you have each den have their own little individual table. So that, that you can go ahead and kindergartners go to their what, or what we do and then the fifth graders go to a different one. It's really how you want to set it up. The things we have is really cool displays about all the things you use. Um, every year our scout shop can put out a coupon with a checklist of all the stuff you can get, and we can run that inside your packet when you when you get your uh, joining materials packet. You get these ten percent off coupons and then a list of all the different items. Um, but displaying items is also one of the things. Um, this glider is not the glider you'll be getting because this is one that's really awesome. It, it, it's, uh, <laughs> uh, it's a little bit, little bit bigger than the one we'll get. But uh, another thing that's really neat. This is online. I want to thank MJ who's here for updating this last year. Um, but Chaz, I don't know if you want to put that on this. This is another pack sheet that has more information that's also on that thing. But um, one of the things cool about this one is it talks about all the your calendar and all the things going on. And there's a calendar on the back. Again, this is a Word document that's like fillable. You can just put all your own information on it. It has to come from Google. This is going to have, um, you, you might have some other flyers that are there too. This is one that 
Um, JoJo's unit created, but you could have some other flyers there that just like want to promote your events. Say, hey, you know, join me so much if it comes to the different floor. Hey, this is our den meeting flyer. We're going to, we only have two kids in our den. We want to get five. So here's a flyer to our den meeting. Bring the two new kids that join, bring the flyer to your friends and try to get some more kids to join. Um, having some patches or pictures is really cool too, like showing the patches. Like, even if you just pull a bunch out, put them on the table, the kids love like looking at them. Or if you have like just like a stockpile of old patches, where if the kids join, like you get the first patch. So those are your Bobcat patch for every kid that's patches. Um, having the handbooks is also really cool. Kids like look through them, they like to learn more about it. It's one of those things where they grab it, they see it, they're like, I want to do this. Um, obviously, Pinewood Derby stuff is always really popular. Um, if you can have a, a half track there, that's something really exciting. That's really good too. Um, other things, uh, promoting, we, do, we typically don't have our day camp stuff ready to promote at that time. I think by August for the next year, but having pictures of day camp, talking about something that you do as a pack is really, really important. Um, if you want to know more about it, like, we have all these digital graphs, but if you want to know about like the program itself or what the big account that you need, it's important to you. Um, popcorn. We also have kind of our popcorn display here and then the scores and some other fun stuff. You could, you could have an activity with these scores, but so popcorn flyers, we'll have these out. And we'll have a couple of trains, but having those there too. So if somebody says, I don't pay for all this stuff. It looks really exciting, but I don't know if I have the money I don't know if we got the money for it, but you can pay for your program with popcorn. It makes it much more affordable. Um, yeah, so having that display table, really, really important. So, I'll be guys. So, station number three, your registration table. This used to be as, as late as just 2018. We had no computer in this table just like four or five years ago. We now have these as a backup. And these is our primary mode of registration. Also, this is the mode of registration. These sheets, which will give you a folder, a QR code on it. I want to show the chance along with the register, but you can just go on their phone and do it. They don't have to sit at a computer or a tablet and do it. You can have the tablets and computers there if you have them available. Or you can just scan it to the table and register online. Um, I like having the stations so that you can like, help them through it. And there will also be ones that I don't want to do an online application. This available. If you're getting, if they need a scholarship, um, many families need scholarships. Not everyone. Um, they need to have a, they need to have a physical application. They fill out a, they fill out the online application. There's the Simon King Council. 100% pays those scholarships. National doesn't pay any of those scholarships for membership registration. So very important to fill this out. This is the way we apply scholarship funds, and basically the council pays for memberships and they use it. One thing also I didn't talk about, you did, you guys may not know this, but um, this is a postcard we sent out to all youth that dropped from your units from last year. So if a scout in 2022 did not register for 2023, we sent a postcard out to them. We may have had some scouts come back, I'm not sure. I don't know if you have, if you have any, you haven't. They might have gone to a different pack. I'm not sure. But we send a postcard out to scouts um, as well. And like, now they still are welcome to come. They can come back to scouts. And then there will QR code and have a different out to back your ball. So, registration station. Last station. Last station. Then we'll answer questions and do whatever. Uh, here is our uh, scout registration assistance form. Try to be discreet about this. I know for a lot of families it's sensitive whether they want to do it or not. That's why we leave it at the last station. We, we leave it with the ideally at the station you have your pub master, you have your committee chair, your key three members, people that are kind of gonna kind of finish the night off with the families in terms of saying, boss, we registered, so excited. And they meet the kind of the people running the pack at the top level. Um, and that might be the appropriate time of the person because we wanted to sign up, but I don't, I don't know if we could swing it. Um, that's why you can pull one of these out and say, hey, take this home, come to, come to the next meeting, come to the next activity, you fill this out, and I can do it right now too or whatever. But you want to make sure you're good, your, your son or daughter and your family can participate. We don't want to do that. Um, also, there's a fee structure chart here. Um, you can have that at that table too. Um, it just depends on what they're doing. Um, and it depends if they're doing a physical registration. They already know what the key is if they register online. But if they finish, if they finish the physical education, you can come through with a check or cash or with a card. If you have an account to take cards. This is a fee structure for this year, but they know how much they're registering for. So 
again, I've got like 50 or 60 of all these items. So feel free to take them when we're done. Have a calculator. Give your Hello Kitty checkbook. Uh, checkbook so you can write a check if you need to write a check. Have a cash bag so you can use them on cash and receipt book so they know that they're registered. Um, and when you give registration to your district executive, so after you've done all this, have somebody send them out. So they'll have somebody send them out before you write away. So maybe give some out or just show them that they use. Um, but when you hand your applications over to your district executive or to your ship chair, you hand them in with some packs to be handed the same application officer. Hundred percent of them were done online. That's okay. We didn't we didn't see the applications, and that's okay. For those that did, one of the things we really encourage you to do is hand them in and have them audited before you them. So look over the applications, make sure you sign them, make sure that you have the right amount of money. Um, our number one issue with why families don't join is because they don't know if they've joined or not when they pending a physical application until way too late. Um, and the way you can expedite that process is by making sure what you hand in is one, you've received it and you know that the person that got it is going to hand it in. And we, we, we really want to do a better job of that. And then two, making sure you've kind of made it as best as you can before you hand it in. Because if you hand them a mess, expect that mess to get figured out over a long period of time. If you hand them something that makes sense, and think we can put it in the system right away, expect them to get in the system very quickly. It just kind of depends on the situation. Um, so this is really quick. I ran through this really fast. I'll answer some more questions now, but um, it's pretty simple. Again, you could do all this and have an activity. You could have a guy, if you're at a doctor, if you're at a elementary school, you can have three scout leaders and a couple of three scout, scout BSA members and a guy got pit. You can have them do it in that TV outside. You can have them do something fun. Where, or you can have them do something that one family member does with them. You can do a lot of different things. But this is kind of the core. I've never done this before. To do this is a minimum. Maybe your table isn't three tables long. Maybe it's one table. Maybe it's one board. Maybe you only have one sign up sheet. Maybe you only have one computer. Maybe you don't have all the stuff. But if you have a system, the likelihood that you'll, you'll get them to sign up goes way up. And it makes, it makes, it just makes it look way more organized. It makes like, it makes it seem, uh, it makes the process go much smoother and, yeah, change over. I want to make sure there's a natural progression to it. You want to make sure that it's set up in a way that they're walking in and they have to walk out the same way that they walked in. Right. 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 In, in every other process I've done this, I've done this. Like, Joe just said, where it's a line. It's a line up. You get to one step and get to the next step. And the other thing is, I recommend if you have a couple of adults or the youth wearing like the class B shirts, have a couple of folks in the, the, the teen shirts. But if you can have people in the, the t shirts, some people are more comfortable talking to someone who looks like a regular Joe instead of. Someone in the team shirts. Sometimes that helps. I think it also helps. That's a great point, I think it also helps with the idea of being you. But I think that for some people that have never wear scouts as a kid, you know, or some people think it's really cool. Like, I'm actually the real youth. It's like, other people, I don't, I think, I don't want to wear the youth. But I would be a leader, but I just don't want to wear that get up. I don't know. But there, for some people, it's a barrier. Knowing that you can wear a cup scout, they can t shirt and shorts and be a leader, and no one's going to. Oh, 
so two years ago that was an issue. Last year it was way smoother. So last year we saw them live like everybody else. We were literally every morning, like four o'clock in the morning, I get a message from the day. Here's your unapproved online application. And literally it's just a list of all the people that haven't been approved yet, or if there's something wrong with their application, what's defective with it. So it's like so much faster with paper applications because you literally can just email it and be like, hey, did you get this message? If you're the right person associated with your PAC and BSCAT.org um, and my dad's scouting, they will send you messages saying, hey, you got another application. You just got to click on it and approve it. Um, and again, there's no money, money handling other than what you mentioned earlier, which is the dues. That's the whole, that's the only element where I think um, there's a way to figure out how to be able to have the ACH put in your directly to your unit. Yeah, Tom, you'll literally, if they sign up on their phone right there, they walk over to this table, you can go and show them on your phone. You approved you. You approved them. And then, like, two days later, if you have to, you go in your scout book, you're like, I'm going to send a text message out. I'm going to send a text message out to everybody about the reminder. But it's not always the best for everybody. There's gonna be kids that there's gonna be families that can't afford to do the payment for it. There's gonna be families that say, I don't want to put my information. Uh, most people that you're given the option, some people are given the option to say, I, you just told me I could have done this online, I wouldn't have come to this tonight. Um, so if there's any other question, I want to try to get this done before you guys I guess get back to your family, because that's where you gotta go. I'm going to go over the next room. You can collect your stuff. I'd be glad to answer more questions. If there's stuff online, if you want to type questions in, I'd be glad to. But I do want to make sure everyone gets to uh, get to them. Look for an August uh, for uh, education about uh, membership, the information getting out, and popcorn uh, materials getting out, and roundtables. We'll have a coordinating effort to make sure you get the materials. Even if you can't make it to the roundtable, we'll have the materials here where you can come in and pick it up. We'll have materials at our office and chill coffee to pick up. And we'll find ways to get you your materials if you can't make it to the round table. Now, if you make it to the round table, it's even better. You can talk to a bunch of people, to see what they do, talk to them about what makes their sign and life so special. They have a network of people to do this with. But if you can't, we'll find a way to get you a show. So, um, with that, thank you. That's the last thing I'll say. I mean, I, you, guys, you guys are awesome for being here. You're awesome for being online. We appreciate you so much. You're making scouting happen. I can't stress that enough. Like, you're making a difference in kids' lives. You're making a difference in families' lives. Every single family that's in your pack, they're stronger. The community's better for it. So just thank you for what you do. Okay, can't thank you enough. And um, if you have questions, let me know. Otherwise, uh, feel free to grab what stuff you need here, except for the rockets. <laughs> but uh, more than more of my other than that, and I'll try to answer some questions online. So thank you, everybody. Really appreciate all your time. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. I don't, there's, there's still 40 people on here, but there's no questions. chat. Questions. Everybody online, if you don't have any other questions, thank you. You guys are awesome, too. <laughs> You're smart, because you get to go to sleep right now. I'll mute over here. Hey, Tom. Thanks for being here.